Hello YouTube, it is your boy B3, back with another kicking graphic novel review. Today we have the true last book in the Scott Snyder Justice League run. Justice League Volume 6, Vengeance is Thine. Yes, so uh, when I reviewed the quote-unquote last book, which was Volume 5, that was kind of the last uh, book of the big story, but these are kind of some side stories that were in the book. Uh... And uh, I will be going through them now. Quick read-up of the back of the book. Judgment is coming. The Eradicator returns, accompanied by a legion of genetically enhanced super soldiers who are intent on establishing a new Krypton on Earth. Boxed into a corner, Batman deduces that the only way for the Justice League to fight beings of science is by using magic. But will the immortal sorceress Madame Xanadu help them or leave them to their own fates? And with a Sorry, I'm a little gunky. And when myth I can't say it. And when mythical monsters suddenly appear at the South Pole, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, The Flash, and Aquaman investigate and find themselves compelled to air their darkest grievances against one another. After learning that the Spectre's host, Jim Corrigan, is trapped in the dark realm of Tartarus and that his separation is causing the Spectre's power to run amok, the League has no choice but to venture into the Underworld to find Corian and reunite him with the Spirit of Vengeance before the entire world is engulfed in chaos. Join New York Times best-selling author, author Robert Vendetti, Damage Hawkman, plus artist Doug Mankey, Batman Green Lantern, Aaron Lepresi, Action Comics Superman, and Zermencio uh, as they kick off the next exciting chapter of the world's greatest superheroes in Justice League Volume 6, Vengeance is Thine, collects Justice League 40 through 47 and Justice League Annual Number 2. So yeah, as I said, these are stories from the Scott Snyder run, not written by Scott Snyder, as you obviously just heard, uh, it's Robert Vendetti with Doug Mankey's great art. Uh, but they were in that run. They were just little side stories, because Scott Snyder had to go do his metal stuff, you know? Uh, but it's it's a really fun uh, read. I actually really, really enjoyed it. I really like the kind of 2016 Rebirth Eradicator. And it starts off with Sodom Yat uh, landing on Earth, and he can't control his uh, Daxamite powers while he's on Earth. And he's like a huge pacifist, refuses to use his powers... He actually tries to keep his people on their planet because they used to be real xenophobic, but now they're starting to branch out, but it turns out his people are actually pretty violent towards other races. Uh, so he's part of this political party that's like, Daxamites need to stay on Daxam because uh, we will just destroy anywhere we go. They're basically like lower-level Kryptonians. Instead of Kryptonite as their weakness, it's lead, and they have like lower-level Kryptonian powers. He comes to warn them, uh, about the coming invasion. Well, the Eradicator genetically engineered a bunch of Daxamites to basically give them the full powers of Kryptonians. Uh, Batman has to bargain with Madame Xanadu to get her to help them out, and the Justice League almost loses. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Eradicator basically wins at first. Even, like, subdues Wonder Woman and shows her knocked out body on camera and he's like taking genetic samples from all the superior beings on earth or what he views as superior beings like wonder woman and etc so uh they actually trick the daxamites onto kind of another planet where they uh slowly lose their powers as they fight and then when they do lose their powers uh the eradicator's like oh guess they weren't superior after all and just tries to well eradicate them yeah. <laughs> Tries to eradicate them. What What do you know? <laughs> but uh, they give all the Daxmites over to the Green Lantern Corps so they can store them on Oa, or they can cancel their powers better. Uh, Atlantis is also being attacked by, like, all these creatures like a Manticore and a Griffin and uh, Chimera, Scylla from the Odyssey, all attacking, and they're pouring out of this hole to Tartarus. And the Justice League puts them all back in the hole, and then they all start fighting each other. And it turns out the Spectre is kind of going wild, uh, because he's not anchored to Jim Corrigan. Jim Corrigan is supposed to keep the Spectre grounded, anchored, keep him from uh, 
just absolutely running amok, and Jim Corrigan appears to be gone. He ran away from God to Tartarus because he's sick of all the horrible things he sees as the Spectre. And, uh, you know, the Source is kind of <laughs> punishing him in a way, and also teaching the Justice League a lesson while he's at it. God do how God do. I suppose. I suppose. But the Justice League goes to Tenascara so they can open the gate to Tartarus. They go down there and fight uh, the old god named Tartarus, uh, who is incredibly powerful. Like, absolutely wow. Almost absolutely obliterates them. Really defeats the Justice League until Jim Corrigan accepts the Spectre back. And then they can all get out of there and the Amazons come to help them and stuff as well. <laughs> it was a fun uh, story. And then there was a really cool story about a murder in the Hall of Justice. They, there was a naked dead body in the Hall of Justice. And uh, they go in to find out who it was. And then the Hall of Justice's defenses start activating. Like... The defense is to stop General Zod activate. The defense is to stop Sinestro activate. The defense is to stop Reverse Flash activate. Like, all the defenses for, like, the opposite villains that have basically the same powers and stuff activate uh, and start hurting the heroes. And it's actually really cool. It's like a dope mystery, but this, they all basically have their superpowers neutralized for the most part, and all the Justice League members have to use their brains to get out of it. It was very, very cool. Uh, but it actually turns out it's because they kept Eradicator's severed head when they defeated him, and it's hacking them from inside the uh, Hall of Justice. So Batman has to put it in, like, an Ark of the Covenant Raiders of the Lost Ark warehouse, which is pretty fun. But that's basically all uh, of that. The writing was pretty incredible. Uh, I really loved it. Uh, such a, a great Justice League run in general. I know this wasn't Scott Snyder himself, but it's part of the run that he shaped, so I kind of just call it that. I hope that's not a disservice to Robert uh, Vendetti uh, and Doug Mankey and etc. And Mankey, I really like his R. I think it's actually pronounced Doug Mank. I, I call him by the po his Pokemon name, Doug Mankey. <laughs> and... Uh, his art's really good, but sometimes his faces are, like, really weird. I talked about this forever ago when I first started videos, and uh, Kami and I were making them together. If you'd like to see more of Kami, check out the Tabletop Recap podcast. Link in uh, our link tree down below. But uh, we always talked about the mank face. Because <laughs> uh, sometimes his faces are just really weird, and there are some faces in here that are like that. But that is it for Justice League Volume 6, Vengeance is Thine. Uh, very, very enjoyable book. Highly recommended. There, There is one other real problem, and that is kind of continuity. Because Superman talks about revealing his secret identity, which I think is something that happened in the Bendis Superman stuff. I've only read the Bendis Man of Steel miniseries, and I didn't like it. <laughs> you can see my full review on that. I didn't really like it, so I haven't started his other Superman stuff yet, even though I will eventually read it because it's Superman in a tentpole book. But, uh, yeah, apparently he revealed his secret identity after going to great lengths to get it back at the beginning of Rebirth <laughs> with Mr. Mixia Spitlick and all that stuff and the continuity fusion. But, uh, yeah... In this, he's talking to Jon Stewart about it, and it was actually a pretty cool conversation, a good read. But it's like, this should have happened way before that? A good bit before that. So the continuity doesn't super line up in this book. The timeline isn't really right. But it's comics, and DC's kind of known for their continuity being a little fucky. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but it was still very good, so I'll give it a pass. But I do think that's something that should be noted in the review. So that's it. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. And I'll see you all next time.